What is up guys, it's your boy Swallam here, back with another classic WoW video for Season of Discovery. Now, while, a lot, while some of us have been busy leveling a bunch of characters, maybe a little bit too many characters, others have spent that time farming and making gold. Today we are reacting to one of those stories done by Jerome, and how he has made 900 gold so far in Season of Discovery. As a gold maker and gold farmer myself, this is really really interesting, and I haven't watched the video before, I'll just tell you that much, I have not, and I'll be going through and leaving my commentary as we go on, and maybe I have some extra advice to leave every here and like every now and then, but still, 900 gold, that is a lot more than I've personally farmed, but then again, I've been so busy leveling alt, so I'm just gonna keep using that as an excuse, but either way, let's check out how uh, Jerome has made 900 gold so far in Classic WoW, Season of Discovery. Now, I will leave a link to both Jerome's channel and the original video in the description down below, so if you just want to hear him talk about this and not my commentary, then go click that link and also show Jerome some love here. Either way, let's take a look at it. So this is how I made 900 gold in WoW Season of Discovery, SOD gold farm made by No Hit Jerome. Yo guys, what is up? Jerome here, and today I am doing something I have really thought I shouldn't do for quite some time. I'm going to reveal my gold-making blueprint, the way I've made over 900 gold in Season of Discovery so far. And just like that, every method he has used is absolutely worthless now, right? Anyone talking about how to make gold online, everything is just like, yeah, now, now it's valueless because everyone knows it now, right? These are methods that, if you do them, not only will result in consistent gold, Ooh. fast gold, Ooh. sales of 12 gold, 30 gold, 40 gold, 50 gold in your mailbox, day after day after day, these methods should continue to work for a very long time. I'm going to share methods that do not require open world farming. They don't require you to go into RFK and solo it by yourself or boost people in RFC. These are methods you can do with any character, and they're things I do every single day. I'm going to share my absolute best gold making secrets, so stick around and let's make some gold together. Okay. Alright, so before we get into the meat and potatoes, the methods that are going to make you so much money, we've got to have at least Wait. a little bit of money to play around and- Where are those clips from? Yeah, where were those clips from? They were good. They were Buying really recipes good. recipes from the vendors, flip on the auction house, so the- Low key, by the way, that is a good strategy. If you're brand new, level one or anything, or you just want to make some gold while you're leveling on a brand new character, vendor flips are insane. You can buy something from vendor for two silver and flip for 50 silver on the auction house. And some lazy p person out there, he's going to buy it on the auction house because he's just going to be like, either he doesn't want to go to the location where you, you pick it up, or he just doesn't even bother checking. He's just like, I see this recipe, it's only 50 silver, I'm gonna buy it. I've even sold like gingerbread recipes for 30 silver each, and they cost me like what, a couple of silver at the vendor? And the vendor is literally in Ironforge, it's in the capital city, and you can flip it on the auction house for a lot more. It's just so simple. Methods I would recommend when you're just getting started, you just hit level 25. First of all, of course, questing. Questing, when you are 25, when you're max level, you get bonus gold based on the XP you would have gotten from the quest. Yep. That's a great way to start up your nest egg, start up your money-making journey. After doing some questing, I would also recommend... It's also like you get some gold that you can then use to make more gold, right? If you're going to use professions, you need to have some starting capital. It's a good thing to do. If you want to farm gold, that's great. If you want to do quests, that's great. Just find a way to get like probably 20, 30, 40 gold. Maybe more as well, the more you have, the more you make. But yeah, just have a starting capital. Man, dark iron ordnance farming. So you can make between yeah. six to eight gold per hour from this farm. It's just like the, the Winterfall Echo farming. This is how I made my first 100 gold. And really, the more money you start with, the more you can do on the auction house, the more you can do with the vendors. It just snowballs your money-making process so much. Yeah. On top of the dark iron ordnance farming, I also did something that you can do right now, which is the DMF vendor camping. I got this idea from Sarth watching his stream, and it has made me over 200 gold very easily. Just park a bunch of level 1 alts at the Darkmoon Fair, you can layer swap, you can camp, you can set timers for yourself, and you can buy all the scrolls of strength, the scrolls of agility, there's so many good items at the Darkmoon Fair. What's cool is you could just send a character over there with like 30 silver and come back later that day, you have 30 gold worth of items to sell. 
Yep. Once you've built up a stack of gold, this is where you can do some really cool money-making flips involving people being really lazy in the game. So the first okay. one is the Chrono Boon flip. So in places like Orgrimmar, on my high-leveled character, I can get Chrono Boons for 18 silver each. During the peak hours, these consistently can sell for 28 to 30 silver each. I've sold over 100 Chrono Boons across all of my characters, and it is a consistent moneymaker. You might think nobody is lazy enough to get a Chrono Boon on the auction house, but trust me, even myself, knowing where the vendor is, I was too lazy one day, I bought three Chrono Boons on the auction house. If you really think about it, people aren't buying that many consumables on the auction If someone put them up for 18.49, do they even make a profit from that? Because they're 18 silver at the vendor, and there's an auction house cut. I feel like people consistently forget about the actual fees from the auction house. Like 18.48, I do not think that's high enough to where you make a profit. Unless you're exalted and you get like probably 15 silver or 16 silver, in that case maybe you make some profit. But if you buy it from, from the vendor for 18 and you sell for 18.48, I don't think that makes up for the actual auction house fee. I bought three Chrono Boons on the auction house. If you really think about it, people aren't buying that many consumables on the auction house. But one thing they have to have when they go in the raid is the Chrono Boon. Yeah. You don't want to lose your Dark Moon Fair buff with your 10% damage. And you don't want to lose that insane Boon of the Black Fathom buff either. Some people are going to do stupid things. They're going to over... Yeah, and especially now that the raid is in like Ashton Vale and there's so much PvP going around, the Boons are more valuable than they've ever been, if you ask me. So they're a pretty significant item to have. Overbuy Chrono Boons and they're going to put them for like 18 silver on the auction house. But trust me, most days you can sell these for 10 silver profit margin very consistently. Another example talking. of an infinite item you can get would be something like the Nightcrawlers. So people need Nightcrawlers for the Aquadynamic Fish Attractor. And believe it or not, most people in the game are fishing right now. So that's a very, very quick selling item to make. So sure, making the Aquadynamic Fish Attractor is great. But just selling the Nightcrawlers alone actually can make you a three times profit margin as well. There are so many items from vendors with unlimited stock that you can just flip all day long and they're consistently going to sell. Another example of that would be the Heavy Crocolis Stew recipe. Of course, most people know the Heavy Crocolis Stew is the best food in the game, the 8 spirit, the 8 stamina. But the recipe from Dustwallow Marsh is kind of a pain to get. On Horde side, you can flip that for anywhere to 2-3 to three times profit margin, getting maybe 60-80 to 80 silver per recipe. On Alliance side, though, people are so desperate, so you can sell these on the neutral auction house for more profit. Sometimes they wow. can sell for even three to four gold each. Another example of an unlimited item flip would be the new Invoker recipes. Yeah. You can get these from Orgrimmar or Darnassus, and people I've been selling really a bunch don't of know those. where to get them. I've been making 10 to 15 silver profit margin on these recipes, and they sell pretty quickly. To me, though, you shouldn't just copy these items. You should find your own items out there that people are buying consistently, and you can flip them for big profit. Once you've got a nice consistent driver like the Chrono Boon flips, I also recommend the Waylaid Supply Arbitrage. No, right now, don't give that away, bro. Supplies. You get the Waylaid Supply from maybe a chest in the open world, maybe a mob, and then you turn it in for some reputation. The thing about this is, if you fill in the box, of course, you get more reputation. So a lot of people out there, they don't want to waste time going back and getting more boxes. They want to get the additional rep- Dude, so many of the things you fill those boxes with, we're making so much profit on, man. Like, the profit margins are huge. Because, once again, profits are usually, the, not just usually, always dependent on supply versus demand. And thanks to the Wayland supply system, the demand is constant, it's always there. So those are just like constant demand all the time, just keeping cash flowing in. It's been great. It's re it really has been. And for that one, it's all about having multiple professions, crafting what's in demand, looking at what's in demand, and also take a look at how many are required for every single box. Because sometimes it requires two, sometimes 10, sometimes 20, sometimes six. It's just very random. So take a look at what's required, how many, and post them in the stacks that they are required in. Like for example, you need 10 rough stones. So post rough stones in stacks of 10. And sometimes because you're pretty stacking, you can get more gold instead of selling a stack of 20. If you can get two stacks of 10, you can list that for basically the same price, as long as nobody else is pretty stacked before you. Same thing with light leather, medium leather, all of those, you can pretty stack. 
herb-baked eggs, that one is a 20 stack for example, but anything that is less than 20 and stackable, you can do this tactic called pretty stacking, which is where I can sell one stack of 10 rust stones at the same price as a stack of 15, and someone's gonna buy the stack of 10, instead of buying a stack of 20 for a little bit more, because they just want 10, so as long as nobody else has those stacks of 10, at a cheaper price, you can charge a premium just for stacking them correctly based on the actual like stack size that is in demand for whatever they're in demand for. Reputation. So they're going to fill these boxes out no matter what the price is. There is so much money to be made in Waylight Supplies right now. The secret is to not just know which items fill the boxes, but exactly the amounts that fill the boxes. So yeah. An example of this would Th be there the we smoked go. bear meat. Now, cooking smoked bear meat typically would not be very profitable, but when you sell them in stacks of 20 for the waylight supplies, you can make two to three silver per bear meat. Another there we example go. would be the heavy wool bandage. You might think you should sell them in stacks of 20, but the actual correct amount is 15. There you we go. That's what he said. You can 20 gold a day just from doing this kind of flip, and it's really easy. Another really good example is the ornate spy glasses. These typically have a 20 silver profit margin, and people are always buying them for the waylight supply box. My recommendation would be to have characters with every single profession. There we go, that's why I've been leveling characters. Professions, and I highly recommend you do the same thing as well. Alright, so all of these methods have made me hundreds of gold, but I want to give you my very best method right now. Ooh. This is the method that has made me over 400 It's gold alchemy, it's easily. alchemy. The solution is no. dark moon fair boxes. Oh. Now, people really aren't buying consumables when they raid. They're kind of just yeah. saving their gold. But one thing people do, especially gold buyers, is they will always want to have maximum size bags. So True. people are going in, they're buying bags, and the Dark Moon Fair box is a 14 slot bag that is really easy to get. You can do these repeatable quests and there's no limitation to how many times you can do them. I've got a very useful spreadsheet that will tell you exactly which items you can turn in. The way it works is basically you turn in crafted items and then you get Dark Moon Fair tickets. With 50 tickets, you can buy a Dark Moon storage box and sell it on the auction house. The key here is that you can only have one box in your inventory at the same time. However, you can have unlimited in the mailbox. So for example, right now I'm doing Whirring Bronze Gizmos and I need seven of them to get four tickets. Now, sometimes you can get a Darkman storage box for five gold using these items, and then you can flip okay, it that's, for that's, 15 that's cheap. gold or even more than that. I'm consistently making six to seven gold per box every single day, and I sell anywhere from 10 to 15 a day. The big secret is to only put them in for two hours at a time. Yeah. That way you can cancel and undercut. You always want to be the top box on the auction house. Yeah, exactly. So the Dark exactly. Moon box strat is a really good way to make money. And if you follow all of these methods, you can easily make hundreds of gold per week. So I just gave you some of my very best gold making methods for free. I would love to get a thumbs up in return or maybe Absolutely, my friend. Channel. I would also love if you checked out my ultimate exploits guide. It's got some very good methods out there for even more gold making that the best players are doing right now. Now that was a really really informative and a lot of info in a short time from Jerome, so really good video, really good. And I feel like all of the methods there are basically the ones that I've been using. I've been doing the waiver supply arbitrage a lot myself, and it's been really profitable. The only additional thing that I've been doing for gold making, except for farming of course, we've been doing a bunch of the BFD farm for example, we did that quite a bit in the first couple of weeks, but we've also used alchemy. Alchemy has been a huge gold maker for me personally, and um, it's been great. Just buying things at the right time and selling on reset days. I have a full video coming talking more about alchemy. It's a really good profession. It just doesn't look that good, because when you open up alchemy, most of the time, most flasks are not profitable. But suddenly, when the raid resets, they become very profitable, and you can start making 5 to 10 silver profit per potion or per elixir, and you sell hundreds of them. It's just like, it's the easiest 10 to 100 gold you can ever make. Just stand at the auction house for a couple of hours and you have a couple, you have like 100 gold in 2 to 3 hours of just standing at the auction house by using alchemy. But there's, there's two more, like for example leatherworking and tailoring has been really good to me as well. Not just doing the waiver supplies, but crafting best in slot items. True faith gloves from uh, uh, tailoring for example have been great. Heavy earthen gloves from leatherworking has also been great. And the recent invoker's mantle and invoker's girdle has also been great. So there are so many ways to making gold and I love that he found a way to make 900 gold. That is a lot and that's basically an epic mount already.
So once again, the link to the drones video will be down below in the video description. Hopefully my commentary helped out here. I was able to add a little bit more to the video. If you enjoyed this one and me reacting to that, leave a like down below. I really would appreciate that. And go show Jerome some love on the video as well. He will be linked in the video description down below. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching today. Leave a like, leave a subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon.